World Intellectual Property Day is really an opportunity for all of those who are interested in the uh, purposes for which we have intellectual property, namely innovation and cultural creation, to come together and to uh, celebrate the contribution that intellectual property makes to both of those two uh, social phenomena of innovation and cultural uh, creation. This year, the theme of World Intellectual Property Day is uh, visionary innovators. Uh, visionary innovators really are those people that transform our lives. You know, there are not so many of them that achieve this fundamental transformation in society or in the economy, uh, but when they come along, the impact is enormous. I mean, it, it changes the whole way in which society operates. One of the great innovators here was Chinese, Tsai Lun, I think uh, is the way his name is pronounced. The contribution of Tsai Lun, I think, was to industrialise, in a certain sense, the making of paper. And that was an extraordinary transformation to bring about. You know, there was the invention of, uh, of a movable type, which was taken up by Gutenberg, and it's a very interesting example of technology transfer, if you like, but originates in China. Uh, and that, of course, enabled the democratisation of knowledge, which was so important to the Renaissance and to uh, European civilization. The example of Marie Curie, Sklodowska, is extremely important. She had to struggle, let's say, to uh, establish her own right to be a scientist as opposed to the wife of a scientist. And then she had this you know, desire to understand that led to the fundamental discoveries for which she was rewarded with Nobel Prizes in two separate disciplines. And I think she's the only person who has achieved this in the disciplines of physics and in chemistry. I think in the case of the arts, innovation really uh, revolves around uh, new ways of seeing things. What an artist is able to do, or a composer or a writer, is to show us a different way, a new way of looking at the world, looking at the same thing. I would betray my generation, you know, in, in favour of Bob Dylan. Uh, I think he really, uh, what he, you, know, you might say he captured the, what was in the air at the time, but he had a transforming effect also. It's very difficult to see who are the, the creators, the transformative creators that are operating at the moment. We see them a little bit in architecture. That's a very visible and tangible expression of, of change. Azhar Hadid uh, is one example. Norman Foster is another example. I'm very fond of our own architect, Stefan Benish, of our new building at, at uh, WIPO. In the long term, we are dependent upon innovation. Uh, if we don't have innovation, we will remain in exactly the same condition as a human species that we are, we are in now. And to change that, we need innovation. I think we should look upon intellectual property as an empowering mechanism a mechanism for balancing the competing interests in and around the act of creation or innovation. So you have to get the balances right, and that's why we all talk about intellectual property. So I would encourage young people to engage in a discussion about intellectual property, um, because by definition it is concerned with change. By definition it's concerned with the new, uh, and those things that are bringing about transformation and change in society. So I would encourage young people, you know, just jump on this and let's look at it and talk about it and what's right with it, what's wrong with it. Uh, but let's look at it in a, in a whole, um, uh, in a balanced manner.